Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. We'll call the regular meeting of the City Council of the City of East Ridge, August 26, 2021, 6 p.m. to order. I'd like to ask Reverend Charles Cochran if he'll come forward, provide our invocation, and lead us in our pledge. If everyone will stand. Father and God in heaven, Sometimes we do not know how to approach you or what to say. We know that all of our hearts tonight, as citizens of this great country, are so deeply concerned about the situation in Afghanistan. Father, we're so sorry and saddened by the death of our servicemen and personnel over there today and other people in that country, other citizens of that country who have lost their lives and even maybe some of our allies. Father, we pray for uh, our president that he will make wise decisions, that he will lead this nation in the way that will keep us free from harm and will bring all of our American citizens back home safely. Bless him, Father, and bless those assisting him. Bless all of those who are over there uh, and, and struggling with that great, great problem. And Father, we also pray that you would be with all of those who are struggling tonight with a virus. It seems that it's difficult for this to be finally defeated in our nation and in other parts of the world. We pray that soon this virus will be behind us. Father, I thank you for this council of leaders in this great city of East Ridge, our mayor, Mr. Williams, and all of those sitting on this council here tonight. We pray for wisdom for them as they lead our city. And we want to thank you, Father, for the progress we've seen uh, in East Ridge, and we pray for further progress. We pray, Father, that the best outcomes will be made in these decisions. I want so, Father, tonight want to give our thanks for our policemen, those men and women who protect us. Let us honor them. Let us be grateful for the sacrifice these men and women make to keep us free, safe in our city. Bless them. Thank you for the citizens who are here tonight, the ones, Father, in East Ridge that love this city and are here in the interest of what will take place. Help us to be good citizens, Father. And most of all, help us to honor and trust and love and serve you and put you first in this nation to know that godliness and the fear of God will exalt a nation and help us to have that attitude. We love you, Father, and we love one another. We pray in Jesus' precious name. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Roll call, Ms. Middleton. Mayor Williams? Here. Vice Mayor Chauncey? Here. Council Member Cagle? Here. Council Member Helton? Here. Council Member Witt? Here. City Manager Dorsey? Here. City Attorney Litchford? Here. All right. The first item uh, under 3B is uh, we're having a discussion of a centennial celebration by Dana Howe and David Tyler. I'd like to come forward. I want to address the council and then also everyone that's here and then everybody that's virtually here. Yes. Also. Um, 
Thank you so much for giving us some time this evening. Um, I also want to say uh, David and I have been working on this event with a small um, team of volunteers across the cities and citizens um, for a little over a year. Um, and we've had a lot of help from the city manager, um, a lot of the city staff, the parks and rec folks. So I want to uh, extend our thanks to those people as well. Um, everybody's been really helping in and working hard. Um, David and I have been working hard too. My name is Dana Howe. Um, I'm an Eastridge citizen. I bought my house here in Eastridge about four years ago. Um, my husband and I have lived here and we love our neighborhood. It's one of the great special things about Eastridge is these are great neighborhoods. Um, I also serve on our planning commission and I walk my dog a lot through our wonderful neighborhoods in Eastridge. And I was walking by Andy Witt's house, I don't know, a little over a year ago, 18 months ago. And she said, hey, would you want to help plan this Eastridge 100th birthday centennial celebration? And I said, sure, I'll help. And then David and I showed up at the first meeting um, and we were <laughs> chairs. <laughs> so <laughs> um, we've been working really, really hard. Um, and we have a lot of really fun stuff planned. I'll let David introduce himself as well and then I'll kick us off a little bit. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, my, uh, my name is David Tyler. Uh, I've been an East Ridge resident for 13 years. Um, I think it's the greatest city on earth, uh, and I'm very honored to be the chair of the East Ridge Centennial Celebration. Uh, I'm also the president-elect of the East Ridge Optimist Club, um, and uh, I, I've, we've put a lot of work into this, and I think everybody's gonna be very excited. So um, we really wanted to use the Centennial Celebration to honor the milestone of Eastridge's 100th birthday. We wanted to make it special, we wanted to make a splash, and we wanted to kind of bring the community something to get really excited about, something new and fresh. Um, so we put together a really fun and exciting event. Admission at Camp Jordan on September 25th is completely free to the community, and we have a fun um, lineup of events. Um, and I'll let David talk about that. All right. Uh, to, well, to kick everything off, uh, Scenic City Multisport will be presenting a 5K and 10K race uh, starting at 8 a.m. at Camp Jordan. Um, we will have uh, inflatable attractions and games provided by Shell Service and operated by uh, the volunteers of Action Church. Um, we will have an Alice in Wonderland arts, crafts, and activity section um, for kids um, provided by the East Ridge Library and sponsored by the East Ridge Optimist Club. Um, we have over 80 vendors, everything from home goods and jewelry to local art, small businesses. Uh, we're going to have 14 different food trucks and beverage vendors. Um, city services like fire and police department will be in attendance, along with codes enforcement. Uh, and then we're going to have the East Ridge Community Food Pantry as well, um, uh, and, and local churches. Um, there will be live music um, with a beer garden. Uh, with local breweries like Chattanooga Brewing Company, Five Wits, Naked River, Wanderlinger, and Odd Story, uh, and we'll have yard games provided by Top Golf. Um, we are also incorporating community-oriented features at the event, like a mural by lo local artist Laura Dalkey, uh, a historical film provided by the Brawley Group, um, made by local Easter citizen Chris Brawley. Um, uh, the ropes course will be open that day, and a fishing derby will be hosted at 9 a.m. by the Scouts. Um, we will close out the evening with a message from Mayor Brian Williams and fireworks provided by the Chattanooga Red Wolves. Um. Yeah, so we are really, really excited. We've incorporated ways to really highlight the community, celebrate our history, celebrate our progress here in the city of Eastridge. Um, and it's free and it's a great, it's going to be a great community event. Um, we would love for everyone to come out and see your faces and enjoy your community and meet some new people um, and celebrate Eastridge's 100th birthday with us. Um, I'd like to open up to questions from the council or anyone out here um, if you have questions for us. Um, some other things that you can do uh, to learn more about our event is follow us on social media. Our Instagram handle is EastridgeTN100. Our Facebook is facebook.com Eastridge slash Eastridge 100 years and our website is Eastridge100.com. Anybody have any questions? I do. Okay. First of all, I do want to thank them very much because they've done an absolutely wonderful job of getting this organized, but they also made me the volunteer coordinator. So I would li like to know how you would like for these people to volunteer because I'm going to need Buddy and different people out there. I see Charles uh, to maybe help us out. So what ways can they volunteer? 
Sure. Um, we had a volunteer meeting pretty early on. We'll host another one before the event now that we're getting about a month out from the event. Um, we'll have tons of opportunities to volunteer the day before for setup during the event all day on Saturday. And we'll have specific time outbreaks and um, specific jobs outlined at the second volunteer meeting that we'll host before the event. Anybody else? Everybody planning to come? And bring a friend. And bring a friend. Okay, um, earlier I was passing around a box that you put names in. We have some super cool stickers and merchandise. So we're going to draw some names out and give away some cool stickers. So while you do that, I want to mention, I think um, Representative Helton has been able to secure the Yes, the speaker governor. The, the governor is going to be out of town yes. that weekend, but the speaker of the house is coming Great. in his absence. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And I've reached out to um, the um, county mayor, and he sent his regrets, and he has an appointment out of town already. But I've also reached out to um, Commissioner Boyd, and he, he he plans to attend. Great. Excellent. Yeah, we'll be excited to hear okay. from people. Um, five stickers. Five stickers. Five shirts. Five shirts. We can do this. Um, Shirley Manning. Back there, Vicki. Uh, Kenny Rogers. That's, are you sure I'm back there? You dig to a different part of the box here. I think they put more than one of their names. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, we got blanks in here. Uh, Mark Pittman. Lee Jr. Corporal Lee Jr. <laughs> One more sticker. One more. And Annette Mosier. Oh, nice. David has the shirts in his car, so he can take sizes and get them to you. Yeah, if you can get with me afterwards, if I call your name, and then I'll get your size, and I'll get the shirt to you immediately afterwards. Uh, let's do Charles. Starts with an M. Is it McCullough? Ah. Uh, K. Vickery. Oh, nice. David Bostain. Oh, he wanted a shirt so bad. <laughs> uh, and then I have Buddy. Oh, nice. Okay. And then uh, Alan Qualls. Nice. All right, if, uh, if you guys could see me afterwards, I'll get your t-shirts. Um, so finally, we also have some really awesome flyers. Um, you should see them around town, but if you'd like to get some from us um, before you leave this evening, we have a whole box. We'll leave it sitting up here. Grab some, pass them out to your friends, um, or if you own a local business here, we would love for you to hang it up. Um, or if you're in the virtual audience, um, just let us know and we can get you one and hang these up. Um, we want to get as many people in the community involved and out at the event on September 25th. All right. Thank you again, Mayor and Council. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. You all have done an amazing job and put a lot of time and effort in, and it's greatly appreciated. We're honored. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll move to um, item four, the consent agenda. I assume everyone's had an opportunity to um, review the minutes of the August 12th Council meeting. We did have an update on page three. I assume everyone has got that. Um, and the decoration of surplus property. I'll entertain a motion for the consent agenda. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. I have a motion to approve by Council Member Witt and a second by Vice Mayor Chauncey. Do we have any discussion? Roll call, Ms. Middleton. Vice Mayor Chauncey. Yes. Council Member Cagle. Yes. Council Member Helton. Dane, I was absent. Council Member Witt. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. 
All right, we'll move to item five, communications of citizens. This is an opportunity for citizens to address the council with any uh, questions, concerns, accolades. Um, for any business owner or citizen, they'll have five minutes. I will say there is gonna be a public hearing for the ordinance concerning the tax rate. Um, so the first one on the list is Van Price. Okay. Next is Robert Gilreath. All right. Then Steve Paris. Yes, sir. If you'll come forward and uh, state your name and address. My name is Steve Paris. I live at 1323 Orlando Avenue. For the record, I also own 1327 Orlando Avenue. Uh, last time I was before you folks, might have been your very first council meeting as the, the council as it is now, maybe your first, maybe the second. You recall I questioned the honesty and transparency of city government at that time. I just want to say for the record, as two years later, I haven't seen anything to squelch my doubts. We have streetscaping that was supposed to happen on this end of Ringgold Road that had been approved, budgeted, and was in the planning stages under the previous administration that has come to a streaming halt. We have abundant of new growth, residential homes going in the area, which should obviously bring more income tax-wise into the company. Camp Jordan, the border relief tax, border zone tax relief was supposed to have been one of the greatest windfalls that East Ridge has ever had. Obviously that wasn't true because of what is going to be discussed later in the, the increase in taxes. Um, I'm not going to get into detail on taxes, but for the record I'm going to be shown, I still have a lot of doubts about the integrity and transparency of this council. Thank you, sir. That was all that actually has uh, signed up on the uh, sign-in sheet. However, if anyone else would like to come forward, they have an opportunity at this time. I see no one else, so we will move into communication of council members. Start on this side, Council Member Cagle. I have nothing at this time. Vice Mayor Johnson. Yeah, I just want to give a big thanks to David Tyler and uh, and Dana Howe for their hard work. I know they put countless hours into that, so I just wanted to thank you. Appreciate it. That's all. Council Member Hilton? Nothing at this time. Council Member Witt? Nothing. All right. Um, I would, I've got a couple things. Uh, one is um, the Red Wolves. Uh, they are first in the USL 1 standings. They took first place over the win last Saturday with... Uh, Union Omaha and they'll be playing this Friday night in Toronto and their next home game will be September the night 7 p.m. against North Texas The other thing I wanted to mention in the press release went out just uh, I think yesterday um, Food City um, They updated another press release that they will have their new store expected to open by early summer of 2022 that's going to be uh, there at the intersection of Ringo Road and Bells Avenue um, I'm very excited about this. Uh, we reached out to um, the regional vice president and spoke with him and was able to secure a location and secure a amazing 54,000 square foot supermarket and gas and go that's going to be located in East Ridge, just a little ways from where the current one is. This store will have an in-store bakery, a deli, um, a cafe, fireplace they'll have uh, a hickory smoker pizza ovens uh, they're going to do in-house meat cutters they'll have uh, steaks and fresh meat to order um, the expanding grocery and frozen food and produce departments um, a floral boutique that will be staffed by a designer seven days a week rapid checkout services with six checkout lanes and seven self checkouts um, and then they'll have a full um, food city pharmacy equipped with a consulting room and walk up and pick up windows um, and then again they'll have a gas and go which will include diesel um, and they'll have a Starbucks with uh, other amenities along with that and they'll have a bank as well Tennessee Valley Federal Credit Union will be the bank 
So we're very, very excited about this, this development on the west end uh, that's going up there um, close to the, to the tunnel. Hopefully this will be a catalyst to start bringing more things in that area, which we've been desperately trying to work on. And, and, and yet um, we've also got Dr. Crothers who took the Kingwood Pharmacy and has redone it. And then we've got things working in the middle of, of the East Ridge. So things uh, I feel are looking, looking up. Um, and lastly, I always talk about the Centennial. Uh, nothing more I need to say. Great presentation, and thank you again for all your hard work. I'll pass it to the city manager for communications. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I also want to thank uh, Dana Howe and David Tyler for all the hard work they've done on the Centennial. I've seen a lot of the behind-the-scenes work they've, they've done and uh, the countless hours they've spent on this. It really shows how much they love the city, and we do definitely appreciate all, their, all of your hard work and everything you're doing. September 25th. Looking forward to it. A uh, quick update based on uh, one of the citizens' comments that we just heard. Um, one of our delays, we have almost all the poles along Ringgold Road have been moved by EPB. That was a tremendous undertaking. And just within the last week, we have been notified by the Tennessee Department of Transportation that we have the notice to proceed on construction on the multimodal. So we are now in the process of getting ready to get the bid books and getting the bids out and moving forward with the construction part of this project. And uh, Adam, I'm going to put you on the spot for a second. Uh, would you give us a quick update on the splash pad and the playground, please? Yeah, I'd be uh, happy to. Uh, so the splash pad, uh, it, some of you may have noticed we've started construction over there. Uh, we were able to uh, get all the plumbing in, and next week they're going to pour the pad. So uh, they've had a little bit of delays with the labor and just getting um, some of the products were on back order, but um, this crew was back on site yesterday and today and so they plan on pouring the pad next week all right thank you uh, and that's all I have mayor thank you um, yeah unfortunately a lot of things are out of our hands when we have to deal with T dot and and T deck and other entities but um, thank you for the update and the progress we are making all right, we'll move into old business. Item A is public hearing for ordinance number 1150, the certified tax rate ordinance. So I'll open this public hearing. Anyone that would like to come forward and address the council uh, for or against um, the certified tax rate ordinance, now is an opportunity for you to come. You'll have five minutes. You'll give us your name and your address, please. Charles McCullough, 1214 Reeves Avenue. i just like to say uh, a, a lot of East Ridge is having a rough year this year, especially now. I mean, uh, COVID's coming back, prices are going up. Um, some of us are just now finding jobs again after this last year. Uh, we're, I mean, we're trying to get off the mat. Uh, with this tax hike, it's like you're hitting us again, telling us to stay down. Mayor Williams, uh, at the last meeting, uh, you sh I believe you said uh, not to minimize, but it's just 20 bucks a month or so. Um, I mean, sure, that's true, but I mean, it's another straw on the camel. Um, especially on our uh, on our fixed income seniors, on uh, among us who have lost jobs. Uh, this hurts the least fortunate among us the most. Um, you also said uh, you can't buy anything for the same price that you could 10 years ago. I'm sure everybody here knows that. We're, we all have the same problem. <laughs> That's why I think it's important that we not see another price increase from the city. Um, I mean, frankly, we're, not, we're also not asking the city to buy things for the same prices as 10 years ago since the last hike. 10 years ago, there wasn't a Bass Pro. There wasn't a Honda Power Sports. You just talked about the new Food City going in. We've had uh, 10 years of tremendous growth in Eastridge, and I think that growth money should be sufficient for our purposes. Our personnel cost for this year, this year's budget was, uh, if I read it correctly, it's around uh, 8.9 million. 
uh, forecast for this for this year. Um, the existing uh, balance budget that was presented before the tax increase already had a three percent raise in it. The ex the extra six hundred thousand for salary stabilization on top of that comes out to an extra uh, six and a half percent or so. I mean, take those together, you're asking for a 10% raise for city employees. Um, I see, what, 40 people here maybe? How many of y'all had a 10% raise last year? Year before? Anybody? Year before that? Anybody? Oh, one? We have one. Okay. Uh, in fact, there are a lot of people in Eastridge that got no raise, took a pay cut, lost their jobs this year. Um, frankly, you're asking us to fund raises and benefits that are far more generous than anything a lot of people in this room will ever see. Mr. Dorsey, in your, uh, in your budget document this year, uh, in the, the appendix at the back, you had a nice little org chart that has citizens right at the top the big where the big cheese the head honcho um i see a lot of people here who i presume are gonna i guess we'll find out who are going to be opposed to that tax increase um so i guess my question is is that is that a real thing or, or will our opinions be taken into account or is that just a lip service thank you Is there anyone else like to come forward? Uh, just one question on the, I'm sorry? Van Price, 1901 McBride Road. Van, B as in Victor. My question is, Price, P-R-I-C-E. 1901 McBride Road. My question is on a tax hike. I don't have a problem with a tax hike, but I'll, I want to know where where it's going to go. Um, is it going to go to <clears throat> the police officers, the firefighters, and so forth? Because they're our first line of defense in anything. I've had five heart attacks. Each one of these officers out here know me because of the heart attacks. And I'm going to tell you what, you've got the best cotton picking police department anywhere. I'll put them up against anybody. These guys right here, they put a badge on, their blood pressure goes up 10%. Then they put a vest on, it goes up another 10%. They don't know if they're going to get out on a traffic stop and get shot. They don't know if they're going to go on a domestic and get shot. The police department and fire department should be your highest paid uh, division in the city of B Stridge because of their qualities and the way they, they're operated. Their chief, all their chiefs and so forth, phenomenal, phenomenal individuals. But that's my question to y'all. Are they gonna get a, a substantial raise for what they do with, it, with this tax hike? I think you'll be covering that. When I'll be we covering get, that when we talk about the oil, sir. Great, thank yes. you, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Yes, sir. State your name and address. Robert Gilreath. I live at 4902 Maryland Drive. Uh, I've lived there since 1978 uh, as a taxpayer. I've owned several businesses, and I'd like to thank the mayor and the vice mayor and the council for allowing me to make a few comments. In regards to this tax increase, I ran for city council in 2018 and 2020. And while I promised people that I talked to that I would do all that I could to keep a tax crease from happening, most of those people, which of the approximately 21,000 plus people that we have in the city of East Ridge, around 26% of them are either elderly 
or dis on disability, uh, which means they're on fixed incomes. I really think that we need, as or I think the council needs to really look and get more information out of where these in where this tax increase money is going to go. Now back a few years ago we had surplus and had money coming in with the Border Region Act and I understood we had surpluses. I understand things go up, but we all have to deal with that. Not just the city, not you know we all have to deal with that. What I would like to ask the council tonight is don't vote on this second reading. Table it and get some more information out there to the people. They just don't know what all of this is about. I thank you. Thank you. Do we have anyone else? Sure, if you give us your name and address. Y'all know me, I'm Randy Sewell, 6610 Hilton Drive. I wasn't gonna to speak tonight. I think hearing this gentleman here kinda of inspired me. Uh, going back with, like I say, the, the seniors, the people that are disabled, I know in 2006, the state legislator uh, enacted a tax freeze for seniors and those who are disabled over 65. Why can't we do that here? I mean, you have to be qualified for it. Not everybody over 65 will get it. It's kind of an income base. But for those who are struggling, why can't we do that? Um, right beside you, there is a state program that actually is specific for elderly homeowners, disabled homeowners, disabled veteran homeowners, and widows of disabled veterans. So the state has a program that will help supplement and reimburse tax, property taxes. Well, the way I was understanding, I mean, we've got, what, 92 counties in Tennessee, 300 and something cities. Uh, majority are participating. Seems like it's more open, I mean, the cities or municipalities that got to be the one who sets it. I mean, same here as Hamlin County. Our tax appraiser wouldn't do it. He says it's a commission problem. So I assume it's the same thing here. It would have to come before you guys. I can comment if you like. Go ahead, if you like. One, one reason why we, we depend on the, uh, the property tax relief program, it helps, like as he said, it helps all the seniors. If you do do a property tax freeze within the city of East Ridge, those citizens, let's say you had 20% of the citizens that might qualify those citizens would never pay a higher amount of property tax on their properties ever. Right. If for some reason the city needed extra revenue in the future, you would be putting the burden on the younger people in the city to have to pay the difference <laughs> in order to bring in that revenue. You know, and uh, that's where, let me finish. Okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. That's where <laughs> that problem comes in. Um, it's, it's great for the seniors and we appreciate everything the seniors have done, don't get me wrong, but uh, the way the law is written at the state level, once you do that, you can't retract it if for some reason something else happens. So most cities are just very conscious of that when they look at it, and that's why the property tax relief program is so great. Because no if, you had to, if, you had to, if you had to, if you had to raise taxes for, let's say, in ten, even 10 years from now, if, you had to, uh, if it's another 10 years till taxes uh, get raised, if you had to raise taxes by 10 cents, to get the revenue, you might have to raise it 15 cents to get the same amount of revenue because you have a certain portion of the population that will not be part, part of that increase. So it puts an additional burden on the other people that also live in the city. I'm not saying that's not the direction the council may not want to go, but I'm just pointing out that fact. Yeah, I understand that, I understand. Another thing, I was kind of looking through the property tax roll. Who may be behind delinquent? And lo and behold, one of our worst hotels Two years, 2019, 2020, over $100,000. You guys down there, every minute. <laughs> you know, it, 
just feels like now property owners have to take up for what they're not going to do. Why are they behind that much? Why are they still in business? That might be a Mark Lidford question, but I know it, they have a certain amount of time to catch up and before legal action can be taken. Well, right, and that's uh, be governed by the county. They handle all the tax collections on that, but I know. you can't preface the operation of a business based on well, whether or not they pay the property tax. I know, I know, but it just seems like it's, you know, you're coming after us because they're not going to do it. Well, at some point they have to. It, yeah, I mean, ultimately, if they if they don't pay it, then it goes to the um, foreclosure. That's on the first Thursday of every June, and it'll be four years after the back taxes are due, and in which case then it goes to public sale, and that's when we would collect the, that plus the I interest. I agree 100%. Y'all need money now, and then now y'all are looking at homeowners to get that money now when it's really out there. Anyway, thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else? Yes, sir. If you give us your name and your address. Faye Griffith, 1512 Mill Street. When you guys vote tonight, you need to remember that we don't need this. I don't have a problem with anybody getting raises. They deserve it. But when you interviewed, I stood right back there and uh, I asked you about property taxes. I can't quote your exact words, but what, you, what it amounted to was you said, basically you saw no need for it, it shouldn't be an issue with all the new revenue. So, I mean, I'm getting, I'm lost now. So you tell me one thing, but you guys are gonna vote to do something else tonight. That's all I gotta say. So. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes, sir. Again, if you'll give us your name and your address. George Matter, 1608 Heather Street. Thanks for your comments earlier, Randy. So Randy's my neighbor. He lives down the street. Um, I'm a business owner in Eastridge, and I'm also a caretaker for two disabled elderly citizens. Um, seeing how economic times have changed Chattanooga and the overflow uh, due to the effects of housing cost increases um, uh, outside investment um, into the city of Chattanooga and how that's poured over into uh, East Ridge. Um, I have a concern. Um, I have a concern for Randy. I have a concern for my parents. And I have a concern for future generations in East Ridge. Um, we don't want things to change. I think keeping the people that are here, the jobs that are here, the police force, the people that work with uh, Mr. Vaughn on the city streets, um, we're doing a great job and we're doing the way, things the way they should be. Um, if we continue to increase taxes, not only in the city level, the state level, we also increase the burden on that, those future generations. We increase the burden on the elderly who have limited fixed incomes, who have medical expenses, who have things <laughs> which are rising costs that are um, outpacing 3% of actual inflation that we usually use to assess how this economy is going. Um, and I feel that we're also, also putting our citizens out. We're pushing out future generations of people that deserve to live here. Not only myself, not only the elderly, but also the migrants. You know, um, future generations of young families that are trying to establish themselves because Chattanooga isn't affordable anymore. Hickson isn't affordable. East Brainerd isn't affordable. We need to preserve these ways of life for our people we need to make things more accessible in saying that, and incre increasing taxes isn't the way to go. I think uh, with the amount of uh, increase in economic activity, um, I challenge you, Mr. Mayor, and the council to look at more um, inclusive ways of uh, bringing in more revenue. Um, you know, I think Eastridge has a lot of barriers to entry as far as being low relative to Chattanooga for business owners that are relocating from Chattanooga because the barriers are so high, because insurance is so high, because crime is so high in Chattanooga. So Eastridge poses an incredible potential to bring in that revenue, to bring in additional businesses that can be used to fund this difference. And I don't understand why that needs to be a burden of the citizens. I don't understand why that can't be for the massive corporations that are moving in, all of the resources that we already have, and the resources that are coming. 
Uh, why isn't it that we aren't looking at other uh, state programs uh, that are already in place to increase that? Um, and it's not a means of exclusion to get businesses to go away and go to Chattanooga. It's a means of enticing them. With growth comes competition, there's supply and demand. Um, and with the amount of demand that there is in Chattanooga, Eastridge has an excess of supply. So I think it's a, it's a model that you guys need to be tasked with to work out amongst yourselves, um, to look at what sources of revenue can be raised within the actual business community here and how do we continue to grow that without burdening people, without pushing them out, and especially with protecting our senior citizens and our elderly people that exist here. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anyone else? Yes, sir. If you give us your name and address. Yeah, my name is Mickey Spencer. I live at 713 South Lovell Avenue in East Ridge. I moved back here a couple of years ago to take care of my mom from Florida. I grew up here in East Ridge. I graduated from East Ridge High School way too many years ago. When I moved away back in 81, East Ridge was a thriving community, and we all loved living here. And we had a lot to be proud of for our living here. I followed events from a distance while I was living in Colorado and Washington, D.C., and Orlando. And I was proud to be able to say I came from East Ridge. When I moved back here, I anticipated that I would be moving back to that area for which I was proud. I've been disappointed, very disappointed, by what I've seen. Some of it's wholly attributable to the city commission mayor and city manager. Some of it's been attributable more so to your predecessors. But the point is, is that everyone has the right and the obligation to pick up the ball and run with it and not continue kicking the can down the road. This, it's easy to say, I want to raise taxes. It's easy to throw money at any problem. It's very difficult to look at the problems that exist and say, how can we make these more efficient? How can we make these more effective? How can we use these opportunities to better address the needs of the citizens and the businesses of East Ridge? I feel badly for the first responders because they've been fed a bill of goods saying, don't worry, you pass this uh, tax increase, you'll be taken care of. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You have nothing in writing about that. All you have are some vacuous promises. And I feel really badly for you because you do deserve to have your incomes brought up to being on par with what you deserve. And I'm just very frustrated with what I've seen of the leadership of Eastridge so far. And it's not at all what I anticipated coming back to. This is, this is just a big disappointment. We've, the, and again, you guys uh, and ladies, you were not a part of the original Exit 1 Camp Jordan fiasco. It was promised us that, hey, if we bring this in, we'll have so much money, we'll just be swimming in money. We won't have to raise taxes forever or virtually forever. And it's not been very long before we're having to raise taxes or so we're we being told. It's, this, this isn't right. And I'd like you to think, each and every one of you, very carefully about whether you wish to retain your positions on the city commission as city leaders or whether you choose to take the easy way out and vote for tax increases. Thank you. Thank you. One quick comment on, on that is, uh, it's not an easy way out. Um, it's not easy to raise taxes. I've struggled with this. So um, I disagree with that the easy way out is raising taxes. Is there anyone else? Yes, ma'am. If you'll give us your name and your address. A. Vickery, and I live at 1110 Tamarack Trail. First time I've been in a long time, but I thought this was important. 
I've lived here probably over 45 years. I watched, it was a, I got married and I moved here. And I love this place, I always have. I've watched it grow. I've watched some of the scandals that have gone on up here. Um, I don't understand why it has to be so much more than what the state says. The state says 99 cents, and you're wanting to go higher. Why can't you do 99 cents, and in a few years, if you can't make it, or the revenue is not coming in from some of these bigger businesses, like Food Line, I mean, uh, Food City should be bringing in a lot more business. Um, where Red Wolves should be bringing in more business. They're building apartments, if I understand it correctly. That will be more revenue. Can we not do a lesser amount and see what we get rather than, I'm a senior citizen. I just refinanced my house. I'm paying a fortune to get it paid off in 10 years. I lost my job. Now I am really on a fixed income. My unemployment's fixing to run out. My insurance is going to go up because my house has been reappraised. So now I'm going to have to pay more taxes and more insurance. It's, 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 think about it. Don't go up the full amount. Do the, what the state recommends. And in a few years, if we're not getting it in here, then you can rethink it and maybe, okay, or maybe we can restructure some things and, and, and get it to even out. I agree the police officers do a great job in the city of East Ridge. Our fire department does a great job in East Ridge. And sometimes I have a problem with sanitation, but they do their best. But think about it, guys. I really think we've, we've got a great place. I'd love to see it great. And remember, seniors won't live forever. We've got to think about dragging the new kids in here. You know, even if, if you do a, you know, we're not going to be here forever, even if you lower it for the seniors. We're eventually want to die out and we got to bring in new blood and if the taxes keep going up new blood may not come thank you so much thank you is there anyone else i see no one else so did you want to read that at this point or during the ordinance I want to read the gist of it. Okay. Okay. This is a letter that we all got at the last council meeting, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to read the gist of it. It says, I am writing in support of the citizens against a property tax increase. I have appreciated the, tax, the past tax remaining steady, especially when the uncertainty of the last two years I do not feel we are in a guaranteed recovery yet and are still adjusting to whatever our new norm will be. Our businesses in East Ridge uh, increased and in turn revenue is more already available to our city needs. Well, I've heard that comment right here on the podium that our uh, sales tax and stuff stayed normal and was above normal. So I kind of agree with this right here. So uh, I just want to put that in record right there. Uh, Can I ask a quick question? When we ask who wrote that, because if, if those weren't your words and we have a public hearing, it's probably good sure, to put the name sure and address can. in the uh, record for a Miss uh, Susan B. Rector. In the address? 836 South Germantown Road. All right. Thanks, sir. All right, I will close this public hearing. And we will move into item B, ordinance number 1150. In ordinance of the City Council of the City of East Ridge, Tennessee, to set the property tax rate above the certified tax rate. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. I have a couple of things I'd like to hand out. Um, I forgot my right order. And then I'll start talking. If you already have one of these, just. A couple of those may have to come back this direction.
Okay. Um, the first thing I'll start with, back to the transparency issue that we heard earlier. Since June, we have been talking about the needs, not the wants, but the needs of the city, um, dealing with um, our budget, the workshop, um, what we need in areas of personnel, what we need in areas of equipment, and all these sort of things. And at the last couple of meetings, as you know, every meeting I've been talking about what those needs and amendments were. When we had the budget workshop back in June, we had all the departments come in and, and talk to the council. We had things such as court with salary adjustments of 10,000, police, 14 vehicles, six additional officers, uh, work on records clerk pay and a salary step plan with fire that we had three additional firefighters return, refund floating fire firefighter position, maintenance equipment for the fire apparatus, rescue medical vehicles, swift water raft, RIT pack bottles, fire engine replacement, animal services need a new van, street department want us to look at funding two open positions that they have that we've been holding on purpose. Traffic department want a laborer. Parks wanted part-time positions, uh, arena roof repair, arena upgrades, top dresser for fields, water line repairs at the RV lot, and then we talked about salary adjustments, and that doesn't even include a new animal services building uh, and a new police slash fire building. We went through all those in public at our budget workshop, which was recorded and is out there for the entire public to see. In addition to that, at our meeting in June, we went through, after whittling down that number, which was over $4 million, we whittled it down to the proposed FY22 amendments, and I gave you another copy of that in case you don't have the one from the last meeting, where we were reducing, at this point, uh, 20000 out of library, because we had too much in their salary line for the part-time positions that were compiled together, combined together. Parks General Rec, Creation, they needed $30,000 uh, to have additional part-time to help man the weekends <coughs> for all the tournaments and events that are going on out there. They, used, they were able to get part of that by reducing one of the full-time positions they had that used to be over at the East Ridge High School ball fields that we no longer um, are taking care of. Traffic control needed a traffic laborer to help with painting, signs, signal inspections, things of that nature. Police, um, criminal investigations, um, $125,000 for two officers from the list of where um, Chief Allen wanted six. And in addition to that, in April, this council also voted for him to go ahead and hire two officers already at a, at a cost of about 125 plus a little more for equipment, things of that nature. And that was absorbed in this year's budget already. Uh, $170,000 for the Hamilton County Ambulance Service. We've been over that over for the last couple meetings as to why we need to switch over to the Hamilton County Ambulance Service. And that's going to be $170,000 uh, per year for four years. After that point, the county takes it over and does their normal billing. That's just the capital that we have to put in up front for that in personnel because of the large increase that that's going to put on them, correct? Then we talked about paving, $200,000 to combine with the $500,000 we have in State Street Aids to work on the worst parts of the city. We talked then about salary stabilization. We talked about $600,000 to put in, and I told the council the methodology as to how we came up with that number. One of our problems with salary stabilization, this was in June. You get to August, and you get the Times Free Press, where it talks about Chattanooga now has to raise more taxes to fuel raises for their city workers. So this isn't just a local East Bridge problem. This is a problem all around Hamilton County, probably all around the state. They were having to deal with this. We are also going to pay for seven police vehicles. Thank goodness we have some, some uh, money coming in from the state for, for COVID relief that we're able to utilize on seven vehicles that we were able to get Stan, who's down by over 15 vehicles because there's been no vehicle replacement program. There have been a lot of things that have not been done in this city because we have not raised taxes in over 10 years. We have a lot of things that have been put on the wayside. We have a lot of maintenance issues that we haven't dealt with. Like I said, a lot of vehicle issues. Fire chief was promised, uh, was told he would have a fire engine probably a few years back, $700,000. Where's that coming from? We have all these sorts of needs that we are working through to be able to provide the quality of service that you as citizens need. 
and to me that's one of the most important things that we're supposed to do. With that being said, I'll start with, if you look at the long sheet that says property tax versus general fund operating budget, the long one. The last time taxes were raised in East Ridge was in 2011. In 2012, the property tax accounted for 50% of the revenue of the East Ridge budget. Do I have that page? Okay. 50%. As you see it, as you slide over towards 2021 and 2022, the property tax right now is only accounting for 34% of the East Ridge budget, operating budget. So we have been utilizing other revenues to help cover the costs and the increased expenditures. But at some point, we are at that point where we have to be looking at additional revenue to be able to help cover it. Yes, we have had businesses coming in. Um, you go to the local option sales tax line on here that we have. You see some years it goes up and some years it's been going down. In the last 10 years, we've gotten a total of seven, just under $800,000 total in lo extra local option sales tax over what the base was when we started. Yes, that number will hopefully eventually go up. Um, and that's one thing we are hoping. So maybe there won't have to be future tax increases for a while. With that being said, that is what, I just want to make sure I brought up that fact that when it used to be half of our budget, the property tax revenues, it is down to 34%, and we have been utilizing other revenues to help cover that difference. Next. Let's look at the Hamilton County tax rates, that sheet I gave you. I put the, uh, the I call them the peer cities that we have here in Hamilton County. We have Chattanooga, College Dale, Red Bank, Saudi Daisy, and East Ridge. I put down what the 2018 certified rate was, what the rate was they went to in 2018, what the, 20, what the rate is today, what the certified rate was, and then what the adopted rate was. In the last 10 years, Chattanooga has raised their taxes in 2014, 2018, and 2021. College Dale raised theirs in 2011, 2014, and 2019. I think I left out the 14. Red Bank, 2012, 2018, and 2021. Saudi Daisy, 2011, I'm sorry, this is 2014. 2011, 2014, and 2018. East Ridge hasn't raised taxes since 2011. The county last raised taxes in 2017. With all that being said, we have been holding the line on not raising taxes and doing more with less in all of our departments. We have great fire department, we have great police department, streets, sanitation, parks, public works. All these guys and girls do a lot to help the city function at the level of service that you all expect and you all deserve. How many, if you're an employee in here tonight, please stand. Thank you. One of the things that, that we're looking at here is salary stabilization. Now, with this, as we've been trying to, to talk about the salary stabilization, this isn't just a raise for every employee in the city. That's not the purpose. We looked at this starting in June to try to take care of the issues that have come up with certain employees, competitive-wise, and um, I'm getting the right word, but competitive-wise, and uh, with other areas in Hamilton County and other benchmarks that we have around the state so we don't lose more employees to Chattanooga to other places these employees have gotten cost of living raises in the last few years which is great but in some cases they'll tell you they are still paid less than Hamilton County Chattanooga Red Bank Saudi Daisy College Dale we're just trying to keep up with the flow of where things are right now this still doesn't get us all the way up because of what Chattanooga is now broadcast that they were going to start doing in August. So with that being said, we went through and tried to look at all the, I'm going to have uh, Michelle Senegali, I'll get up here in a second, she's the HR manager. She has been studying almost every single position within East Ridge government, trying to uh, look at the trends, look at the other, the other cities to see what they are uh, doing as compensation for all these positions. And with this, I'm going to let her go through the, the analysis page that I gave you as well to talk about this for a minute. And this doesn't mean, this isn't like a cost of living raise where everybody gets the same amount of money. 
the same percentage. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to make sure that we are trying to be competitive in the public sector with other cities and county workers that are in this area. Some people may get a larger adjustment than others. Some might not get any adjustment if they're already competitive. So that's the way we're looking through this. And it isn't lip service. We have talked to the department heads. We have this list here. Michelle's going to go through her overviews, if you would, please, and then I'll continue. Mayor, Council. So this is a little bit of an overview of the, the major things that I found here. Um, just to clarify, I looked at all full-time employees. Okay, this does not include part-time. This does not include elected officials. So nobody sitting up front, court clerk, judge, nobody elected. Uh, this does not include city manager. Okay. Uh, 16 out of 133 employees are currently paid, paid less than $15 an hour. Some of those are 12 and change. In administration finance, HR and IT positions are on an average 27% below the average of neighboring and comparable municipalities. And again, I did not um, complete a comparison to the private sector. Other cities will do comparisons like this against other municipalities and the private sector. This does not include the private sector. All three court positions, again, not the elected official, the other three positions are paid less, are paid 25% less than average of neighboring and comparable municipalities. Two positions in the building and codes department are 27% below and one is 15% below that of averaging, uh, the average of neighboring and comparable municipalities. The two full-time library positions are 28% and 32% respectively below the average of neighboring and comparable municipalities. In the police department, the records clerk position starts at 25% less than the average. Below, um, I have here the comparison of our patrol officers who are currently at $20.87 per hour as compared to Collegedale at $22.32, Cleveland at $21.75, and Chattanooga at $22.05 after their pending increase. Three positions Three positions in the street department are paid under $15 per hour, and two others are paid at 27% below the average of neighboring and comparable municipalities. All three positions in the building and maintenance department are budgeted to be paid at 26% below the average of neighboring and comparable municipalities. In our fire department, all firemen positions, cadets and engineers, are currently paid 11% less than what the Chattanooga new rate will be. The current rate is also 15% less than the average of neighboring and comparable municipalities. In our animal control services, all three positions are currently compensated at 30 to 33% under the average of neighboring and comparable municipalities. In our parks and rec department, two full-time positions are under $15 per hour and three positions are in 15% less than, that of average, than the average of neighboring and comparable municipalities. And in our sanitation department, the CDL drivers uh, are paid 8% lower than the average of neighboring and comparable municipalities, but this is after we recently gave them an increase. Now, since Chattanooga has announced their intention to increase drivers by 42%, we'll see them fall behind by 22%, again, even after we have just given them an increase. And again, no comparison was made to the private sector. Thank you, Michelle. With all that being said, it has been, it's been over 10 years, as I said, 10 years since it was last a property tax increase in East Ridge. All the other cities have had proper, a couple property tax increases since that time. I think we have some of the best employees in this county and in this state. And we want to make sure that we keep those employees, that we're able to attract and retain good quality employees to help keep the services of this city at the level that you all need expect and deserve that's where we were going with all this mayor the other sheet i gave you that has the state that gave you all that has a stabilization view on it that shows you at the, at the present where michelle through her extensive analysis and i want to thank her again for all she's done on this she has spent a lot of time going through and working on these positions and these numbers as you just heard from her her analysis so at this time we are very close to that six hundred thousand dollar number as you see and you know, Chattanooga's given $30 million for employee raises, adjustments, however you want to call it. We're looking at $600,000.
our employees are important to us. I think they deserve it. I think it's a great investment in what we have here. And yes, it's been 10 years since we raised taxes. It's never easy to raise taxes. I totally understand that. But we have been, two years ago, when I first started here, I was coming in uh, uh, a couple times before my official start date to help with the, the budget that year to look at things. And back then it was interim city manager Kenny Custer and finance director Diane Qualls had to cut 900 million, excuse me, $900,000 out of that year's budget just to make sure it balanced so we didn't have to have a tax increase that year. So every year we have been working our way through as best we can to provide those services. And like I said, we've been struggling. We're behind. That when, when Chief Allen first came to me and said he wanted 15 police cars, I laughed. I said, are you serious? He says, yes, it's been that long since we've had police cars. Fire, the same thing. Garbage, we had, to, we had to take action and buy two new garbage trucks because of the condition of the ones we had. We had the emergency purchases for those. So this is just something that is really, really needed for the city of East Ridge. Like I said, it has been 10 years. I do realize we're talking a property tax. Our old rate was 1.3381. The certified rate went down to 0.9929. To get the $1.1 million that we have been talking about since June and outlining in public since June requires, as we said, to go to $1.25. So that's about all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I will entertain a motion for ordinance number 1150. Make a motion to approve ordinance 1150. Second. A motion to approve by Vice Mayor Chauncey and a second by Council Member Whit. Do we have any discussion? I see none. Roll call, Ms. Middleton. Vice Mayor Chauncey. Yes. Council Member Cagle. No. Council Member Helton. No. Council Member Whit. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Ordinance number 1150, past second and final reading. Move to item C, resolution 3183. A resolution of the City Council of the City of East Ridge, Tennessee, to approve the agreement with Chattanooga Red Wolves Academy, CWRA, for Camp Jordan soccer field utilization and programming. Uh, Mr. Mayor, there is, uh, we are still working through a couple um, pieces of that agreement, so it's not ready to come to council yet. We thought we would have it by today. Um, there was a couple unforeseen circumstances, so we had tabled it to this meeting. I'd just like to go ahead and postpone it. It should be ready for the next meeting. But let's, let's just, if I could just ask for a motion to postpone, that way when it's ready, I will put it back on the agenda. Well, I'll entertain a motion to postpone. I make a motion to postpone. I'll second. I have a motion by Councilmember Witt and a second by Vice Mayor Chauncey. Roll call, Ms. Middleton. Vice Mayor Chauncey. Yes. Councilmember Cagle. Ask a question for a vote. Do yes, we sir. have to remove it from the table to make this motion? Put it back out here? No, because it was table it was tabled to a specific time, which is why it was still on the agenda. Okay. So it was tabled to a specific time. It's it's goes on that specific agenda because it's that time. Okay. Yes. Council Member Helton. Council Member Witt. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. All right, uh, we'll move to item E, discuss, take action, dog park. Yes, Mayor Council. Uh, as I uh, presented the, at the last meeting that we did officially get the, um, the, uh, the uh, okay to change the dog park uh, location for the dog park grant uh, from the, we got, we got the, um, they gave us the okay to change it from Springvale Park to City Hall. So um, that, that's up to the council to vote on it tonight. So it, I, I don't think I have any other discussion, of, but I'd like to make a motion if I may. Yes, in your motion, yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, make a motion that we use the, uh, the $25,000 dog grant from the dog uh, foundation, dog grant foundation. Dog park dash foundation. Dog park dash foundation to construct the dog park down here at City Hall. All right, we have a motion by Vice Mayor Chauncey and a second by Council, excuse me, Council Member Hilton. Do we have any discussion? Yes, sir, we had a fence give to us. What else give to us? 
I've got some verbal pledges from uh, some local business owners to donate the entire portion of the fencing project. And I've got approximately eight dog, uh, dog park benches go towards the, uh, the construction of the dog park. I'm sorry, correction, six dog park benches. I think that's probably about all we'll need, but I think we could get more if we need them. Any other discussion? I, I would like to make a comment. Uh, Councilmember Witt had some questions at the last meeting. Um, I did do a little bit of research at, down at the uh, Springville Park, and there is approximately 18 parking spots down at Springville Park. And uh, as for what we know for sure is if if we had 19 park goers at, at Springville one the 19th car would probably have to park at the street and opposed to being down here at City Hall I noticed that I came down here a couple times during the day during the first shift hours I know we had some concerns about parking and I, I counted approximately any anywhere from 11 o'clock in the morning till 2 o'clock in the afternoon there's approximately 75 to 100 empty parking spaces down here at City Hall and I visited again in the second shift hours where City Hall employees are not here, and there's probably a little over 150 empty parking spaces down here at City Hall. And I found that uh, most park goers for the dog park usually come during those second shift hours. So, um, And as far as barking goes, um, I, I don't think that there's going to be a problem with barking. It's not going to be like an animal shelter type situation. I think most dogs are pretty content when they're at the dog park. So there's the minimum, the, you know, the dog barking is pretty minimal. Uh, so I know we had some concerns about uh, distracting employees down here at City Hall and, and this and that. So just wanted to put that out there that I did a little research on that. Thank you. May I say something? Yes. Since last time I have been contacted by people my age and people with disabilities who feel like to bring dogs to the city center when they have to come here for senior citizen activities or their own different boards, they would prefer that the dogs not be here. Friendly dogs are just as dangerous to somebody who is disabled or an elderly person when they come up to you to love on you. So I have not had one person contact me that wants to move it from Springvale to here so I just wanted you to know that so I've had several who have contacted me that do not want it here so. okay yes sir um, there was something said about ADA in these two handicapped parking spaces are they going to be dissolved or is it going to be still left there I, you're asking me I'm not sure I, I'm assuming they're going to stay the the we haven't gotten that far. Huh? We haven't gotten that far, but I would assume they'd stay. Okay, well, there's something said about using it for the ADA uh, access or something to the park. Kind of leery about taking handicapped parking spaces away. Okay. Totally agree. I will also comment, I would like the council body to also consider um, Springvale as well as a future site. I think uh, having a second one is, is a good thing as well. There's a lot of pet owners. Um, there's a lot of people that like to go and walk their dogs and stuff. So I, I, at some point, I'd like to revisit Springvale and um, have a second dog park as well if the council chooses to move it here. I know I said one more, but one more. <laughs> okay. Since we've already got the fence donated, the six benches, where are we going to spend $25,000 after our building a dog park? Over here or Springvale? Here. Well, this here. Isn't, I, I mean, this is what we're I, This isn't my plan for here. But, I th I'm supportive of his plan, but you're asking me a question I don't know. I can get Cameron down here to tell you what was going to be at Springvale, and I would assume, Vice Mayor, correct me if I'm wrong, most of those same features would just transfer from one to the other. And Cameron is nodding his head yet. Well, I, I've, I've got some plans right here, if you're asking. So um, according to the original plans, when it was presented to me back before, you know, 
when I was told that it was going to be at Springville, there was a fencing uh, quote. I'm not sure who it was from here. I've got a 100 foot by 60 foot fence fence enclosure for a dog park. That's the size of a basketball field or a basketball court. So if you've ever been to a dog park anywhere in Hamilton County, if you've been to the one in Heritage over in East Brainer, that that dog park is over an acre and a half. This is the size of a basketball court. If you go down to the dog park down downtown down there by the the Mock Stadium, it is approximately uh, I believe it's a little over a just under an acre maybe of dog park space. The proposed site that I was able to from the fence guy that I had met out here at City Hall, we put together a double the size of the basketball court size and was able to put a 0.24 acre size dog park. So we're, the, we're still double the size of the original plans and half the size of the average. So why could we not take that money, your money and your fencing and put it down at Springville? You know, I mean, there's, a, there's. A, let me I mean, I, I'm I mean, all there, for combining got, them. The budget sheet was nearly sixteen thousand dollars, and it didn't even include fencing. It had all the other little, uh, you know, the poop stations and the and the. We got to run utilities. We got to put concrete pads in, um, maybe some extra lighting. All the different uh, amenities that go within the dog park. It's it's outrageously expensive. I mean, you'll eat, eat through twenty five thousand uh, dollars. You know, and then we'll probably have to do it a budget amendment and, and, and you know, to, to, to finish the dog park. And at the end of the day, it's going to be the size of a basketball court. We use this lot out here, this grass. We use it for employee picnics and stuff because I've been to employee picnics out there. We use it for National Night Out. It, it's a valuable space to me here. Why would we put dogs out there? Why would we not put them at Springville where we are? Don't we have water lines and things already ran there where there were houses? Yeah. You know, the old water and sewer from the old houses. I, I have been out to Springville Park probably a dozen times in the past two months just because I want to drive by there and look. I think we've had abandoned cars out there. I think we've had property crime going on out there. I was at there's cars sitting out there. I don't know what they're doing. I don't want to spend $50,000 on an attraction for the citizens to go down there and not know what they're going to walk into. I don't. I think if we put it down there that the police would be patrolling it regularly well, and taking care of our park. That was one of the biggest park. reasons why I wanted it down here at City Hall because we got a police presence, we got an employee presence during the day and even when the, the staff goes home. We have a presence of people already down here walking dogs. We got the splash pad going in. We got amenities that's centrally located right down here at City Hall. It makes more sense, and it's not even flood zone. That, that's a whole other subject I want to talk about. Having it down here at City Hall, I got a hundred reasons why we need to have it down here. And I got really no reasons why I want to have it in Springville. Regarding the safety of, of the seniors, dogs are supposed to be on a leash if they're not in that dog park. Would but be they my get understanding. off of them. If they're in that enclosed fence area, that's the only time they should be off leash. We have a leash law in Eastridge, and that should apply. To, to City Hall, and it, it shouldn't be unsafe. I, I'm in favor of having the dog park here at, at City Hall. And it should be double gating as well, <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken. And we got that field out there for National Night Out. We got five other acres over there right next to McBride Middle School that we could use for National Night Out. And if it ever, ever gets used for something else, we've got so much other property surrounded this, this building that we could use for National Night Out. I still think it's a bad idea. Any other discussion? All right, we have a motion and we have a second. So no other discussion. Roll call, Ms. Milton. Vice Mayor Chauncey. Yes. Council Member Cagle. No. Council Member Helton. Yes. Council Member Wed. No. Mayor Williams. Yes. Thank you, Council. I will right, we'll move to new business. Resolution number 3184. A resolution of the City Council of the City of East Ridge, Tennessee, approving the appointment by Mayor Williams to the East Ridge Planning Commission to fulfill an unexpired term of Mr. Mickey Spence. 
Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, we had several very good applicants, um, and it was um, not an easy choice, but um, I'm going to, because um, they're both great, um, Scott Cornelius, I'm going to appoint for the expiring, the unexpired term for our vacancy, which will be, um, I believe, 824 of 23 is where this, this will, um, Mr. Cornelius will actually fill the slot until that appointment. So I'll entertain a motion for resolution 3184 for Scott Cornelius. Motion approved. Second. I have a motion to approve by Vice Mayor Chauncey and a second by Council Member Helton. Do you have any discussion? Roll call, Ms. Milton. Vice Mayor Chauncey. Yes. Council Member Cagle. Yes. Council Member Helton. Yes. Council Member Witt. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Move to item B, resolution number 3185. A resolution of the City Council of the City of East Ridge, Tennessee, approving the appointment by Vice Mayor Chauncey to the Eastridge Board of Zoning Appeals to fulfill the unexpired term of Mickey Spence. Yes, sir. And my appointment's gonna be Mr. Eric Zitso. He's a 22 year uh, resident here in the city of Eastridge. I wanna thank him for his willingness to serve the city. Thank you. Thank you, I'll entertain a motion for resolution 3185 for appointment of Eric Zitlo. Motion to approve resolution number 3185. Second. And motion to approve by Councilmember Helton and a second by Councilmember Whit. Do we have any discussion? Roll call, Ms. Middleton. Vice Mayor Chauncey. Yes. Councilmember Cagle. Yes. Councilmember Helton. Yes. Councilmember Whit. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Thank you for your service, sir. We'll move to item C, resolution 3186. A resolution of the City Council of the City of East Ridge, Tennessee, awarding annual bids for street department materials for fiscal year 2021-2022. Yes, Mayor. The, um, the city advertised for the, these annual bids for the street department materials, which we do, and as I said, annually. It was, uh, the bids were submitted on August 3rd, 2021. After analysis by staff, we determined that the items on the attached page that you see uh, the items that are highlighted um, in yellow, we show the detail of each item and the bid price from each selected vendor. Um, a couple of the items are higher in price than a, a competitive vendor, but because dealing with distance, the amount of time it takes for our employees to go out there and come back, um, in a couple of those instances, it, um, especially if it's an item that we use regularly, it makes more sense to pay that little bit extra because by the time you count the time and the employees and the fuel and everything else, it ends up being cheaper. So those couple, as you see, I have an asterisk and it's highlighted there. Um, those are the only ones that are exceptions to this. But otherwise, I would appreciate the council's approval. Thank you, sir. I'll entertain a motion for resolution 3186. I make a motion to approve resolution 3186. Second. We have a motion to approve by Council Member Witt and a second by Vice Mayor Chauncey. Do we have any discussion? Roll call, Ms. Middleton. Vice Mayor Chauncey. Yes. Council Member Cagle. Yes. Council Member Helton. Yes. Council Member Witt. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Move to item D, resolution 3187. A resolution of the City Council of the City of East Ridge, Tennessee, authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Chattanooga Transfer LLC for solid waste disposal transfer station services. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the City of East Ridge advertised for these proposals, um, and they were submitted to us on August 5th. The lowest and best proposal was from Chattanooga Transfer LLC, which is also known as Capital Waste Services. Their price for the first year of disposal at their facility on Wisdom Street, which is behind the Hamilton County 911 Center on Amnicola Highway, is $31.25 per ton. There's an annual renewal clause in the contract, but the whole contract cannot exceed eight years. Each year, the price may increase by the consumer price index, which is a standard um, item that I've seen in um, other disposal contracts and in certain telecommunications contracts, things of that nature, where that's what they use to try to put an inflation factor in on what the disposal price will be. Um, these services would commence on September 1st. Just as a quick aside, um, we are also, as you know, uh, picking up recycling materials within the city. 
as of last year, we have now we used to be able to dispose of it for free, which was great for the program. As of last year, actually, we used to get credit for it. Yes, and then it went to we free, used to get and then paid it went the other for way. it. Yes. then it went to net zero. And now we're having to pay for and it. Now we're paying thirty-five dollars a ton to be able to, I can't say dispose of recycling, but to have the recycling processed at a facility. We're paying more for the recycling now than we are for the garbage. And that has not been factored in at all to any of our taxes, any of our fees, or anything at this point. But I just wanted to make, make sure you all were aware of that. And that's been absorbed. Yes. Do you want to say something, Robert? OK. Board, sir. Williams, uh, city council members. Um, also, you got to remember too that we're going to be adding routes, and we're going to need manpower to run them routes because every time through the weeks and the months, recycle is increasing. It's increasing and it's increasing. So we're almost where we we can't handle it in two days. We're going to have to increase the days of picking recycle up. That's all I got to say. And even more, even though it's more, it's the right thing to do. <laughs> All right, I'll entertain a motion for resolution 3187. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve by uh, Vice Mayor Chauncey and a second by Council Member Witt. Do we have any discussion? Yes, sir. Okay, I've read the contract and it says uh, solid waste only in this contract. So what do we do with our yard waste and our brush and our white goods? Where do they go? Same place. Same so, place. So yeah. we, Except some of the yard waste may go to, like, brush, yeah. go down to your facility for chipping and things of that nature. But white goods are considered, they're considered garbage. Yeah, they're considered Well, in their definitions over here, they didn't. So that's the reason why I was asking that. And the rubber tires, we still going to dispose those like we have been? Yes, as far as I know. That's not my point. That's increased. Okay. Uh, Does state still give us money back for those? They <clears throat> used to have a recycling incentive for tires. Uh, they do over at Silverdale. They do collect tires over there. Uh, I think there's a fee to get rid of them over there. I'm not sure how much. Chris will Okay. Yeah, we used to pay to carry them over there. So, uh, and another thing you said was, <coughs> that our recycle is $35 a ton. Yes. So can we, uh, of course, this is a question for you, uh, Robert. Does the, can the recycle still be carried to the landfill or is it still a no-no at the landfill? Um, I mean, it, it, the recycle can be carried there if you want to carry it there, but. Uh, well, I'm talking about through well, where we're going to, Chattanooga. Yes. Yes, we can still carry over there on recycle, yes. Be charged at the rate of 31.25 if it's mixed in with the garbage every day. I believe it went up, didn't it? Mm -hmm. I think it's 35. Well, that's, that's what he said we're paying now. Right. But I'm asking now, if, instead of me having two cans out there and my wife carrying the recycle out there and she's carrying the garbage out there, just carry them all out there and throw them in one garbage can. We don't have to fool with it. Set it out on Thursday or Friday whenever you want to come pick it up. Yes, sir. So is that's going to be loud because I know plastic bags, plastic bottles and stuff at one time weren't allowed to be carried to the landfill. Are you asking for two garbage pickups a week? No, sir. I'm asking if we could throw our recyclables in the Thursday garbage. And when my day is Thursday, throw it in the Thursday, Thursday garbage and it be carried to the landfill toward now. Some of this stuff can't be carried to the landfill because it won't deteriorate or rot. Am I right on that, Robert? Well, we still carry it to the landfill. But am I right on the, on the statement I made about it? That's an opinion. I mean, okay. I, to be honest with you, I, I can't answer that one because, I mean, that's your choice. Yeah, I think it's everyone's choice if they decide to put all their recycle and other garbage in the garbage. Um, but, you know, again, like I said, the right thing to do is try to recycle and, and preserve that's and be fine. green and where, where possible. I know it's going to cost us more, but it's the right thing to do for the earth. In my opinion, I, I, I recycle as much as I can. I do have a question. If, if that's the case, we're paying for all these cans too. At 
that's a lot of money. That's sixty dollars a can. And they can be put back in and painted blue or whatever and <laughs> put back out for garbage. Well save money that way, yeah, I guess you can. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm just asking the question about doing away with recycle that, that and then put it in our garbage. Oh, you said you were going to add routes. Yeah, I'd have to. Okay. Eventually, I'll have to add routes. Yeah. There's no way I can do it without them. All right. Sounds like a discussion when we get the recycle contract coming back up. Any other questions? Roll call, Ms. Middleton. Vice Mayor Chauncey. Yes. Council Member Cagle. Yes. Council Member Helton. Yes. Council Member Witt. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. We'll move to item E, resolution 3188. A resolution of the City Council of the City of East Ridge, Tennessee, authorizing the mayor or his designee to enter into an agreement with ASA Engineering and Consulting, Inc., to provide professional engineering services for the survey, design, and construction oversight of proposed roadway access improvements for a 100-acre development site. Yes, sir. Uh, Mayor and Council, the City of East Ridge, we advertised a request for qualifications for, um, for this project. They were submitted back on August 5th after review by the staff. We have determined that ASA Engineering Consulting is the most appropriate entity to provide the engineering services for the roadway access improvements on this project. Their services will include things like project management, land survey services, preliminary design, right-of-way acquisition services, geotechnical investigation for pavement and or retaining wall design, utility coordination, final design and construction documents, bid coordination, construction engineering inspection, and final closeout documents. Uh, this resolution would authorize the mayor to enter into that agreement for us. And if I may add, this is the exterior. Yes. Road. This is nothing concerning the entrances. In, yes, not in not in the interior Within portion. Within the property. Yes. No. Thank you. Yes. I'll entertain a motion for resolution three one eight eight. Make a motion for resolution three one eight eight. Make a motion. Approved. Okay. Thank you. I right, have a motion to approve by Councilmember Witt and a second by Vice Mayor Chauncey. Do we have any discussion? Yes, sir. Okay, now you, you said the exterior road. So we know we're going to Spring Creek Road. And we're just going to remodel that one. We're not going to tear it out and redo the whole road. They're working on part of the road right now. Okay. This will deal more with the actual on the Spring Creek side. This will deal with when you get to the intersection. Okay. After we see the traffic counts and things of that nature. Now the other side on Max Smith's side, mm -hmm. well, we're going from their property line out to the Ringo Road. Going all the way to Ringo Road? Yes, sir. Okay. And I didn't know that. I thought I understood you say was going to the out there by the life care thing or the senior living home. It wasn't going all the way up in front well, of the Well, it starts at the property line, goes around that East Ridge residence, is that what it's mm -hmm. called? Right. right. Uh, then by Cracker Barrel and the hotels, all the way up to the Ringo Road corner. Okay. Uh, how, how are we going to pay for this? Still working through part of that. Right now, it can come out of Border Region, which we know that's one option we have, and that's what we're looking at right now, is to use Border Region funding for it. We don't know how we're going to pay for it? Well, no, the Board of Region can reimburse it, but then whether or not we work through this on a TIF basis to try to have part of that come in or whether we bond it out and just go straight back to Board of Region, that's what they're still discussing. All we're doing right now is going ahead and getting the, uh, the, the contract and the engineer secured. This isn't construction or anything at this point. Okay, my next question is then, um, ASA Engineering is the Red Wolf Engineering Firm too. Yes. Okay. They also do some of the projects for us, too. They've done right. Ringo Road okay. and Multimodal. And but this project is combining with their project on their interior road. So are we going to match their interior road with our outside road? Well, they already match up anyway because you got the Spring well, Creek side. I'm, saying. I'm talking about 
street lights, fancy street lights, brush, you know, the, the decorative stuff. That'll be a decision of the council when we get to that point. And so that's why they'll be doing the engineering, the assessment, and design. And you mentioned the TIF going back to the Board of Regents to get it paid for. That's one option, yes. But the Board of Regents can definitely be reimbursed. Be reimbursed by the Board of Regents, definitely, for this. Two options. Yes. Okay. Well, explain the TIF. Tax increment financing. That is where you have a development that has um, property taxes associated with it. You look at what the base of that property tax is, and when the development comes in, the value of that property increases, and that incremental increase can be used on the design and construction and things of that nature for the road. Chattanooga has a few TIFs in place right now. Um, that Martin Luther King Boulevard extension, that's a TIF down there. They're doing one for that paint, is it a paint plant, Mark? What is they that are, and about? I can't think of the name of it, but yeah, they've got, I think they've got three currently going on right now. Okay, so now uh, you're wanting to take the base property tax and the future property tax increases to pay for this road and then turn it back into. And I'm talking just the, the property tax dealing with the development, not everybody's property tax. No, I'm talking about just the project down there. Right, that's one okay. option. So if yes. our payment runs. Uh, I'm just going to throw this out there, $200,000 a year for this road. Then we're going to get $200,000 property taxes, so we're going to end up with a net till we get the bill paid off. I mean, uh, uh, zero. All right, so we're not getting any uh, Board of Regions off of the thing because of the packet we give them. We're getting very, very little. So now if we tie up the property tax, then we're going to be getting very little off of that. So then, <clears throat> how are we going to fund the police, the fire department, and all the services that we're going to have to put into this project? Keep it going. We're going to take the balance out of the citizens, the general fund taxpayers' money, or what? So they haven't decided whether to do the TIF or board of reaching out. That'll be a, a council decision. Yeah. That's not my decision. Or we could enter into it out front, so. or or it's possible to do something similar they did with Jordan Crossing. We got funding straight from the straight from the county to assist with the uh, right of way. We had four million dollars. That's a very good point because it would be city and county. Correct. If they went that route, which is money we wouldn't if, have. Anyway. If you recall, until we did that improvement at Jordan Crossing, there was nothing there but Bass Pro. Once that was beautified there was lots of commitments that came in and and it's it's reaping a lot of great benefit for the city but by the interior road of this project at the red wolf stadium coming from max smith that road is going to dead end somewhere out there in the middle coming from spring creek road it's going to dead end so it's not going to be publicly used all the way through from Ringo Road to uh, Spring Creek Road, so that kind of makes it a... That's why I said entrances and not a road, yes. Okay, so that kind of makes it a private entrance uh, for the Red Wolves. So yeah, I, I think there is, I think it is connected. I don't know if it's a thoroughfare. The I've seen wasn't, they went out there and they dead in. If you would like. Give us your name and your firm you work for. <laughs> Mayor and Council, my name is Kenny Custer, uh, Senior Project Manager for ASA Engineering. So the project, the roads on the interior have not completely been designed as it's going to be designed along with the exterior roads. We do have the interior layout and concept of how the road will be designed, but there's not going to be a dead end. You will be able to actually travel from one end to the other. It's just not a complete thoroughfare, four-lane divided highway interstate because the idea of this development is to be a live work play pedestrian friendly golf cart access they want people to actually be able to move throughout the project without people running 45 55 60 miles an hour that's the ultimate goal so it is connectors there'll be numerous roads throughout the project first plans i've seen it wasn't all the way through yeah 
I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of different concepts that are out there. One of the original concepts was a thoroughfare that was discussed. The, the, the means and access from Ringo Road have been discussed. There's been several different ideas, but we believe we collectively have identified the areas, which is from the North Max Smith at Ringo Road in front of Cracker Barrel. Um, given the, um, the easement access that we have there, we were able to find out that EPB does have a 20 foot easement. Um, they are more than willing. Actually, they're bringing th three phase power in right now with their easement that allows us not to have a lot of right of way acquisition. As you recall on Ringo Road, we spent a ton of money on right of way acquisition. EPB has allowed us to go all the way to the back of their easement, so that gives us an extra 20 foot of right of way for right there. So it actually makes more sense to travel um, travel that corridor, and plus the bones are pretty much already there. So. We don't have to move around a whole lot, but still a lot of work to do. But in order for us to actually determine what that cost is going to be, we've got to start working on some design documents. And, but thank you all for the contract. One more question. So, did I understand you say we will not have to be buying right-of-way easements? No, th there's no guarantee that there's not a right-of-way. What I'm saying is that EPB has got 20-foot easement, and when I met with uh, one of the directors with EPB, they said that they would allow us to use as much as their easement as possible. We could go all the way to the back of their easement, which is 20 foot. Um, so hopefully that will eliminate a large portion of the right of way that we would have had to buy initially. Because if you just look at it and you look at it on GIS, the right of way there, I want to say, eh, give or take, maybe 46 feet in some areas, um, all the way down to about 32 feet, I believe. Uh, I haven't looked at it recently, but that's, that's what I recall. Um, but gives us an extra 20 foot of width to be able to work with. So, thank you, sir. Thank you all. Any other discussion? Roll call, Ms. Millen. Vice Mayor Chauncey. Yes. Council Member Cagle. Yes. Council Member Helton. Yes. Council Member Witt. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. We'll move to item F, resolution 3189. A resolution of the City Council of the City of East Ridge, Tennessee, approving a lease agreement with R.J. Young to provide copier renter equipment. In it. Uh, our current lease with R.J. Young has expired for copier or printer equipment. They're proposing a new lease in which the city can piggyback off the Metro Nashville school pricing contract. <coughs> Staff is recommending a 48th month month lease at a cost of 1960-17 per month uh, for a savings of 315.72 per month. It also has unlimited prints and copies which we're paying an overage fee now for extra copies over a certain amount so that will eliminate that cost. So then the 315.72 is actually understated? Yeah it really is. On the savings okay. All right, I'll entertain a motion for resolution 3189. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve by Vice Mayor Tonsing and a second by Council Member Witt. Do we have any discussion? Yes, sir. Okay, the so that's back here, City of East Ridge and new device. We're going to get a Canon copier, staple finisher, three hole punch, and a fax. Canon something, fax, four drawers, inner two way tray, inner finisher, and one HP cover plotter. So that's a totally. Are these three different machines in one, or are these uh, individually as are listed different machines? These are individual. We have one, they're proposing one cannon, which features for one department, four cannons, these features for another department, and then the uh, color plotter will be for codes for the big plans they have to make copies of. So it's six machines. Six total. pieces of equipment. Six, yeah. Six are listed on the front page, then when you go to the second page, it just gets a little... Right. One sheet is current pricing, what we yeah, pay, and the, the next six sheet machines is are. proposed. 
And over here, we're getting a total of one. You're replacing six machines, yes. Yeah, with, with how many machines? That's the question I'm asking. You're replacing six, with six. Any other questions? No, actually. Okay. Roll call, Ms. Middleton. Vice Mayor Chauncey. Yes. Councilmember Cagle. Yes. Councilmember Halton. Yes. Councilmember Witt. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Move to item G, resolution 3190. A resolution of the City Council of the City of East Ridge, Tennessee, authorizing the City Manager or his designee to purchase nine traffic detection loops from Nabco Electric as a sole source purchase. Thank you, Mayor. This goes back to the discussion we had a, a few months ago dealing with the, the aprons, I call them, off of Ringo Road, like at McBrien, at Moore, and going down the street, which have been deteriorating. Um, we have been able to work with TDOT, and they have agreed to come back, as we've said before, and pave those offshoots which is on their property because when they repaved Ringo Road this last time they just went straight down it didn't flare out at those intersections so they're getting ready to do that this fall so we're making sure that we have these loops ready to be able to install once they finish the grinding and the paving and being able to cut and put them in so we're just trying to get ahead of the game since so total of nine loops I'm sorry entertain a motion for resolution 3190 for I ask questions Second. A motion to approve by Councilmember Hilton and a second by Vice Mayor Chauncey. Do we have any discussion? And it says where the uh, the loops are on the agenda right. memo that we sent to Council. Spring Creek at Ringo Road, one McBride at Ringo Road, South Side two McBride at Ringo Road, North Side two Southmore at Ringo, South Side two Tombris at Ringo two. That's your nine loops. Thank you for reading that out. Any other discussion? We'll call Ms. Middleton. Vice Mayor Chauncey. Yes. Council Member Cagle. Yes. Council Member Helton. Yes. Council Member Witt. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. We'll move to item H, resolution number 3191. A resolution of the City Council of the City of East Ridge, Tennessee, approving an amendment to the purchase agreement relative to the property located at 5302 Stone Street. East Ridge, Tennessee, for the purpose of constructing an animal control facility. Do you want me to cover this? Do that or Mark? You want to cover it, Mark? Uh, sure, Mayor. Yes. Uh, following the the meeting when we approved this, I think it was back in the first of July. Um, in my <coughs> discussions or in, uh, with Mr. Russell, there was uh, currently on the property of 5302, there is a dumpster or, or some sort of a trash. Um, back whatever it is there mr russell wanted to work out a resolution to where the current the property that the city would acquire in connection with uh the property on the northern side of it i think it's 5310 i think is uh or 5308 would have a shared easement for the location of a dumpster the seller uh, emerson russell would design that build it put the pad in put the fencing in and then it would be a shared in, in connection with the transfer there'd be an easement for the park for the animal shelter to get to utilize that dumpster it frees up space on the animal shelter property <clears throat> what will need to occur is that where the location of it has been identified as an exhibit to your packet here it would be a um, seeking an abandonment of just a portion of stone street in between the two properties which would be the location so if that's and that's what I understand Mr. Russell would like to do that's what would occur here we have spoken to RPA and they have assisted with getting the efforts initiated on how to do the abandonment and it would go through planning commission it would come back up to this body for approval uh, and we could probably get that through we hope in October because of the necessity to have public notice and advertising and so I'm bringing it back to the council here because that amendment changes what was previously approved 
and I want to make sure that, that gets out um, for the public to see notice and for this council to know. Thank you, sir. Um, and if I may add, um, Stone Street is not a through street. It's already a dead end. That's correct. So this is a small portion at the tail end of Stone Street that we're looking at abandoning if council approves. And Mr. Russell has agreed as um, city attorney, which we just mentioned that all expenses and costs, erecting the fencing, the pad, and everything for to enclose these dumpsters so they're not visible uh, would be at his cost. So I will entertain a motion for resolution 3191. Take motion to approve 3191. We have a motion to approve by Vice Mayor Chauncey and a second by Council Member Helton. Do we have any discussion? Yes, sir. Okay. I know there's going to be a bunch of people disappointed when that it gets closed, especially coming out of the bank and going down to uh, McBride and going up the red light and turning left on Ringo Road. I was trying to get out of the bank and turn left or trying to come out of that back street and turn left on Ringo Road is going to be a pain. The people that live in the apartments back there, uh, I'm going to say frequently, go across the bank parking lot and go down Boyd, I mean a Stone Street there. But that all that to say this, I'd like to ask a question to the uh, Mr. Havel out there. Uh, I don't know if he's ever went and looked. Are grease dumpsters allowed where I own a restaurant and I come out there and I dump my grease in a container on the back of the lot? So basically grease dumpsters, that's handled by Hamilton County and not the city. Uh, that would be something they would look at. But normally you don't see them off on a different property if that's what you're asking, yeah. So they are allowed because if I'm not mistaken, there's one on this, so it's going to be move from there up to here right so they are allowed they're just allowed to be on the property that is dumping the the grease you know they this that's situation where it's, it's off on a different property right the grease will have to be dumped on the property it's coming from instead of up here on the abandonment absolutely it'd, be, it'd go to fernando's i believe it is that's where the yeah that's, that's yeah what I, i'm talking about hang on so, i want to make sure clarity yeah, let's clear the, clear this up the property that'll be abandoned will a portion of it will be then go to the 5308 ring gold and then a portion of it will go down to the 5302 it'll go at the center line so that's a horizontal east to west road the bottom portion will go to the bottom property the top portion will hit up on the um, 5308 or 5310 whatever that property is and then <clears throat> there'll be a shared easement on that portion right there so you're saying Fernando's can pull it up the road up to there as long as it's on Fernando's restaurant side of the center line. The Fernando's can get an easement for them to put the to have that there and assuming that they've got the permission of the easement there that would be a property interest that would satisfy to allow them to put the grease pit there. So they'll have half of that road or half of that abandonment already. And if you go back to, um, uh, if you look on the Hamilton County GIS, you know, it has like a 2020 view, 2018 view, 2016 view. When you go back to the 20, I think it was a 2016 view, Mark, we looked at, and there was okay. actually a shipping container blocking Stone Street at that point, so people couldn't go through. Uh, uh, between the, the bank that, and Stone Street. Well, it's not a bank anymore, right? But that former bank parking lot, which, you know, that's... That's not a through street. It's not a through they street. They shouldn't be going that, through that parking that lot to get the stone. Parking lot, and they can prevent and stop. I think anyone. it was blocked before. To answer your question about people might be disappointed going through, it was blocked before. But it's been unblocked for years. But my main about thing five, is, well, is about the grease trap being sitting up there and dumped. I mean, that could be also incorporated into the build design as well for the dumpster. I mean, depending yeah, on what size you are to dumpster, you could put the grease trap in there as well, and they could still empty it. So, yeah, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be on, you know. The Fernando's property it could be incorporated in that as well. Yeah, and that's the whole design is to have it enclosed. So it is in that enclosed area that's going to be fenced and the concrete pad, all the dumpsters. Any other questions? Roll call, Ms. Middleton. House Mayor Chauncey. Yes. Council Member Kegel. 
Yes. Council Member Helton. Yes. Council Member Witt. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. All right. That's all the items we have on the agenda. So we'll move to item nine, which is discussion of the tentative agenda for September 9th, 2021. Um, first item is employee recognition awards. So there will be some that will have some milestone. In a uh, while. I'm sorry? It's been a while. It has been a while. But I think uh, I, uh, my memory, I think there's at least three that may be more or less uh, milestone awards. So those will be presented in the next first meeting in September for the August awards. And then under new business is an unnumbered resolution PEP driver safety matching grant program fiscal year 22 application. Yes, Mayor and Council. This is um, an application that we do every year through public entity partners for a driver safety <laughs> matching grant. Um, it's on, it, we're going to go ahead and apply. We can apply now. The window opened on the 23rd, and this is one of those first come, first serve grants. We can apply now and have the resolute. And most of these grants, you don't, you don't necessarily have to have a resolution on the front end. It's mainly when they accept it, but PEP likes to have one from the city council on these. But you're allowed to turn that in after you turn in your initial application so you get your place in line. So that's what we're doing on this one. And the, uh, the money, it's a 50 50 grant. The money goes, you know, can go to driver safety. Uh, training technology we're looking at uh, using the grant to purchase some backup cameras for some of the city vehicles as well as do some uh, driver training for those that drive that equipment and we also might start look into getting some GPS monitors for some of these vehicles thank you sir do you have any discussion council and it's usually 5,000 or less I don't know which class we're in, I apologize, but it's 50-50, but it's usually that much or less. I think it was 2,500 last time. I can't remember. Any questions? Thoughts? Any other business, Council? I see none. Thank you very much for attending tonight. This meeting is adjourned.